How does this small $20 capture card that I picked up from Walmart work better than this $150 capture card from Elgato? Hello everyone, it's Jay. And today I wanna to talk about this very interesting capture card that I picked up from Walmart known as the Vivita. So if you happen to like my content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below on what you think and let's get this video started. About a few years ago, I picked up this Elgato capture card in hopes hopes to capture and maintain older games that are not preserved through mainstream services like Microsoft and Sony. But while the capture card has always offered high quality, it has also offered disadvantages like this. The Elgato capture card has always not synced correctly with my USB ports, which has made it very difficult to actually stream with it. One might think it could be that the USB ports are 2.0 and not 3.0, but while my motherboard offers a 3.1, it doesn't really sync up correctly. There are other alternatives like remote play on Xbox or PlayStation, or even streaming your gameplay from those consoles, you still run into the issue of game preservation. Take Test Drive Unlimited. It was a game that had influenced other games like Forza Horizon and The Crew, but has not maintained a proper game preservation. Or what about games like Driver 3 and its history of being the very first Grand Theft Auto before Grand Theft Auto? While you have seen me play GTA 4 recently, I have been remote playing it from a 360 game on the Series X. Remote play has its limitations as well that leads me into uh, this $20 capture card that I picked up from Walmart known as the Vivita. Recently I did a live stream of playing uh, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground which is one of the worst Tony Hawk games to come out of the 2000s. The only way that I could actually capture this game was through the Vivita capture card. Before I get into what comes in the box and how to actually use the Vivita I need to specify that this little device may not work properly on things like the Series X and the PS5. If you want higher quality and a way to stream it without having to download Streamlabs OBS or OBS, the Elgato Capture Card gives you that feature. The Vivitar is just an ordinary capture card that you just plug in and it has no software whatsoever. Let's talk about what comes in the box. The Vivitar Capture Card is very simple, very generic, and it does does not offer any type of software to download. What comes in the box is the Vivitar capture card itself, the owner's manual, and a USB to USB-C cord just in case. This little capture device is pretty set forward. All it offers is a USB output that will plug into your PC and an HDMI input that will plug into the device that you're trying to capture. The Vivitar capture card is pretty set forward. All you have to do is plug it into a USB USB 3.0 port. And from there, I'm using Streamlabs OBS. Once you open Streamlabs, you will go to source, click the plus button, click video capture device, and then click add source. From there, it'll open up a tab for the settings of the video capture device. All you have to do is select the device that you want to capture, which is the USB video. Once that device is selected, you are going to get some crossbars, which means that you have not plugged in your device just yet. But have no fear, once the device that you want to capture is connected to the HDMI port, all you have to do is turn on that device and your device will automatically be captured. Now, some people have expressed that they have run into audio problems while using this device, and I myself did run into those problems. I'm gonna show you a little trick on how I actually fix that. Under the little mixer icon that has all your audio controls, you will scroll down to the Vivitar device that is connected to your PC. I have renamed this device USB video for the sake of this video. All you have to do is click the settings icon, click properties, and from there you'll go down to the device name USB video. It will have monitor off on audio monitoring. From there you're going to bring down the drop down box, click monitor only, and your audio will now be synced up to Streamlabs OBS with this capture card. Keep in mind this capture card isn't 
just for video games. It can also be used on a multiple of things, including camera devices and laptops. Like I said in the beginning, the, the VTAR capture device can be picked up from Walmart for no less than 20 bucks. And it is the best bang for your buck if you wanna capture older consoles, camera devices, or laptops. And the perks of the VTAR capture device is it doesn't have any software to download, unlike the Elgato capture device. Are you planning on picking this up for a loved one this Christmas? Or are you planning on getting the more expensive route of an Elgato capture card? Keep in mind, the Elgato capture card offers more higher end quality, while the VTAR offers what you're gonna be paying for. This device from Elgato has lasted me since I've purchased it, but it has not synced up very well with my PC. The whole point of me getting the VTAR capture card was for game preservation. There are certain games that are just not available on the Microsoft Store or on the Steam storefront. While I can easily go pick up a hard copy of the games that I'm looking for from an ordinary game store, I would really like to stream that content. And the VTAR capture device has really helped in doing that. With that being said, this will be the end of my video and I'm out.